The murder of a drug trafficker leaving his son's first communion. Bombings and shootings in broad daylight by hitmen who carry out assassinations at dawn and escape on bicycles. Kalashnikovs and kidnappings. A money laundering scheme involving relatives of Marbella's mayor. Fugitives and drugs. On the Costa del Sol, all of these movie-like elements have one thing in common. Sweden. In the past five years, criminal gangs from the Scandinavian country have shifted to this corner of Malaga, bringing their extremely violent tactics with them. They are feared for their cold-blooded modus operandi and their ability to penetrate any sector of society. You may associate Sweden with one of the last countries to have problems with organized crime due to their reputation for providing its citizens with one of the highest qualities of living standards in the West. However, the three areas most often mentioned as having high rates of gang activities in Europe are the suburbs of Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmö. Even though Sweden has some of the world's strictest gun control laws, it is faced with increasing gun-related violence because of illegal firearms smuggled in from countries in the Western Balkans. Sweden has a serious problem with organized crime, explains Manny Gorell, professor of criminology at the Swedish University of Malmo. The data indicates it has one of the highest rates of firearm deaths in Europe, with more than 200 victims in the last five years. In 2020, the record was broken with 48 murders the vast majority of which were related to the fight over the drug trafficking market. If the average Swedish holidaymaker is attracted by its sunny weather, quality of life, and good connection to other cities, so too are drug traffickers, who are also able to spend their money on maintaining a high-end lifestyle that is less likely to draw attention in Spain's sprawling residential regions, not to mention being close by to some of the biggest distributors of narcotics in Europe. A review of police operations indicates that on the Costa del Sol, there have been more than 100 arrests of Swedish-based gang members since 2018. Among the most well-known names is that of Amir Meki, who led a network of Swedish hitmen nicknamed Los Suikos, or the Swedes. Meki, a Danish citizen of Iranian descent with Moroccan heritage, was the leader of the gang that also specialized in drug smuggling. Two years ago, they landed on the Costa del Sol, in the Spanish province of Malaga, where they are suspected of bombings and cold-blooded executions in broad daylight. One of the group's common practices was to vandalize enemy property with explosives as a warning prior to the assassination. A spokesman for the Guardia Civil was quoted as saying, this type of narco-terrorism had never been seen in Spain before beyond the hard years of ETA in the Basque country. Meki is thought to be behind two murders in Spain. That of David Avila, a drug trafficker also known as Maradona. In 2018, as he was leaving the church in San Pedro, Alcantara, near Marbella, after his son's first communion. Los Suecos are also suspected of carrying out the killing of 34-year-old Sofian Ahmed Burak, also known as El Zacato, who was a major mover of hashish into Europe. Burak was shot nine times after being tricked into meeting with a messenger outside his home in El Campanario. With contacts in Morocco and links to the Dutch Moroccan gangster Ridouan Taji, Meki had since 2016 taken a big slice in the drug market, both in Sweden and other Scandinavian countries. This was and still is an extremely lucrative market and a deadly war for control waged between his crew and a rival gang calling themselves the Alliance. On the 18th of June 2018, 12 days after Meki's gang kidnapped a rival from the Alliance gang, tortured and left him with a Star of David carved into his back, a gun pummeled round after round into a Malmo cyber cafe where Meki was hanging out, killing three people and injuring three others. It was a very public execution and the police expected more bloodshed, 
They were proved correct when the response took the feud to new levels of brutality. Swedish police believe that the murder of Carolyn Hakim, the wife of veteran criminal Nayef Adawi, was a direct retaliation for the attack on Meki. The couple were ambushed at a falafel kiosk in the Ribbersborg district of Malmo in August 2019. The assassin fired multiple shots and killed Miss Hakim with a bullet to the head while she was still holding their baby, who survived the attack. If that wasn't enough, it is understood that the slaying of record producer Flemur Bakiri near his house in Battersea, London on Christmas Eve 2019 was also organized by Meki's gang. Anis Hamisi, 24, a professional kickboxer from Sweden, was hired as an assassin to fly into London to carry out the murder of Bakiri, which the trial heard was meticulously planned for up to six months. Adawi was friends with and a guest at the wedding of Mr. Bakiri, who was shot up to 10 times in front of his screaming wife, Deborah, and child, in an act of sheer barbarism. Both men were associated with members of the Alliance faction. Meki eventually fled Spain and went to the ground. After some of his gang were arrested, he initially escaped to Morocco, then to the UAE. The suspect was very hard to find, Spanish police said. He not only took extraordinary security measures in his communications, but in every detail of his daily life. To catch him, the collaboration of the Swedish authorities and countries such as Morocco, Thailand, Turkey, Denmark, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates had been required due to the extensive network of criminal contacts that the gang had. Intelligence gathered by Dubai State Security revealed that Meki entered the country on the 14th of November 2018 using fake travel documents. He was eventually arrested 18 months later, having been put under surveillance by the National Police. Detectives gave authorization for his garbage to be analyzed. Having witnessed Meki put his garbage out and the subsequent DNA check was a match. The presence of Swedish gangsters in Spain has always bubbled away under the surface. Certainly, the tentacles of some gangs have spread in Marbella. Last February, the husband and stepson of Marbella's mayor, Angeles Munoz, Swedes Lars Gunnar Broberg and Joachim Peter Broberg were arrested on suspicion of drug trafficking and money laundering in an operation that began after a tip-off from the Swedish police. Another 71 people linked to a Swedish crime organization were arrested in the same bust. The indictment said the organization was involved in drug trafficking, mainly hashish and marijuana, which they export in large quantities from Spain to the Nordic countries, mainly Sweden, with the aim of obtaining large and rapid profits, carrying out money laundering and concealment activities through the use of third countries. Broberg Jr. went on the run and was eventually arrested in Brazil before being extradited to Spain in December 2021. Local news reported that in a phone conversation intercepted by police, he was caught boasting to another defendant about the influence their gang had on legitimate business in the region. We have Marbella. We have Estepona. We have it all. The city is ours. Basically, we have all fucking Andalusia. The case illustrates why the Costa del Sol is the criminal gang's location of choice. First, they came to acquire the drugs. They then smuggled the drugs in from Morocco, stored them on the coast of Malaga, then moved them to Northern Europe using removal vans. The attraction is obvious and the profits are enormous. A kilo of marijuana costs 1,500 euros in Andalusia and sells for 9,000 euros in Scandinavia. Later, they expanded their business. Art, gold, and luxury homes were purchased in an attempt to launder the money. The cash generated in the Nordic country also helped fund the purchase of super luxury real estate in some of the best areas in Marbella, Estepona, and Benahavis. During the investigation, it was also discovered that the gang had rented properties to allegedly launder large sums of cash. The Swedish removals company, Roslagen, had been active across Europe for many years, 
providing removal services for its clients. They served compatriots, who returned to their country after a time living in Spain. And those who were beginning a new life, attracted by the sun and lifestyle. With offices in Stockholm and Gothenburg, the company prospered until opening small branches in Marbella and Torrevieja, Alicante. Two destinations where they found most of their customers. It was information from the Swedish authorities that put the Spanish National Police on alert in 2018. The continuous movement of certain Swedish nationals to the south of Spain suggested that there were potentially some nefarious activities afoot. These movements eventually led the UDYC central officers to a warehouse in the San Pedro Alicantara industrial estate, and it was placed under observation. Rented from the Swedish company by a Spaniard, there were days when the workers locked themselves in the premises for many hours as if preparing shipments for some very special furniture. Under close surveillance, officers let the suspects continue their operations until the first shipment arrived. One of the most notable operations was carried out in Stockholm, where 55,000 units of an opiate drug used as a substitute for heroin were transported to the Swedish capital by one of Roslagen's trucks. A few days later in Gothenburg, 85 kilos of hashish were intercepted that arrived hidden in furniture shipped from their HQ. Suspecting another shipment was coming, the National Police broke into the warehouse and arrested the two men that were preparing a move of 265 kilos of hashish. Simultaneously in Sweden, the two owners of the removal company were arrested and investigators seized 12 properties in the provinces of Malaga, Alicante, Avia and Granada. The investigation is complex and still ongoing at the time of this video. The total amount laundered, in the opinion of the authorities, totaled 7.3 million euros. Joachim used the offices of Wasa Consulting in Centro Plaza Shopping Center in Nueva Andalusia, Marbella. Many of the companies linked to Joachim originated there. It is safe to say that there will always be Swedish criminals willing to supply the insatiable demand for narcotics back in their homeland. With the huge profit margins on offer, it can be seen that people from backgrounds both rich and poor can be sucked into a life of organized crime. In the past, a lack of extradition agreements and the knowledge that their capture was not a priority for the Spanish authorities added to the sunshine, food and nightlife as draws for criminals seeking either a new base for operations or a place to hide out and enjoy retirement. It looks as though that attitude is now changing. If you've enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to support the channel. It allows us to produce more content for you to enjoy. Please stay tuned for more videos coming very soon.